But Stelty and I get talking a little bit about the defense, and he we were talking about yesterday's show, and he said he had seen a little bit of it. He said the word that we used is exactly right. He was like, it, it, LSU's defense has to be opportunistic. And I thought on Saturday, LSU's defense took chances and took opportunities and created things, right? Harold Perkins' interception, Braden Swenson's sack fumble, Major Burns' pick six are all three moments that really stand out from Saturday that was opportunities taken by the LSU defense that put them in, the, in, in a situation to win the game. And you have to take the small wins with this group. And I think that you have to almost be reserved that, that they may be a good defense at some point. It's going to be a long journey to get there. They're not going to be a great defense. What they can be is they can be an opportunistic defense, right? And, and be good at something, whether that's getting off the field on third down, like Braden Swenson creating sack fumbles, creating pressures, creating turnovers, like Major Burns and Harold Perkins did. In taking the taking the ball away, or, or stopping the run in certain situations where I thought that they played well on Saturday, that was Mason Smith's best game mm -hmm. for sure. To to just being able to to do something well, right? Like to do something good. And, and I thought on Saturday, it's a small win, but you got to think about where you're coming from. You couldn't stop Arkansas at all. You couldn't stop Ole Miss at all. I mean, they're setting school records. You're giving up school records. They're setting league records against you. To coming back the next week and it looking like, I mean, quarters one and two in Columbia looked like quarters five and six in Oxford. I mean, that looked like that was a carryover from the Ole Miss game. They couldn't stop anybody, right? I mean, Luther's a dog, no doubt. Yeah. But you can't play him 10 yards space. You can't run him into the middle of the field wide open. How about the scenario at the end of the half? On the fourth down, fourth and 10, you give it up 12 to him. He catches the ball right over the middle for a, for a first down. You give up field goal. I mean, like, I get it. Thicker, but, I mean, thicker. at some point, you gotta, you got to challenge. you got to compete. And I thought in the second half on Saturday, something switched. And I think it was that early stop in the third in, in the third quarter that really kind of set the tone. Yeah. Missouri comes out, they missed the field goal. Started getting a little swag. Yeah, they started to make some plays. They started to, you know, kind of fly around a little bit out there. But, you know, defensively, opportunistic is going to be the word. A lot like 19, right? When you've got this offense that you trust. So much. I would advise all special teams units fair, fair catch everything. So I, I, I want no. I want no chance of giving the ball or giving up a possession and taking one away from Jaden Daniels in the offense. You wouldn't let Caleb Jackson take one out at least one time a game. I, not at this point, Stewie. Not at the. Not at this point he where broke on Saturday, every coach. single. I, I look, man. I, I, I think I, I think he should get more carries offensively. But just from a special team standpoint, I, I'm I'm not playing with fire. I, I'm, I'm I might chances. tell I might tell Skylar Green to fair catch it. Ooh. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? You don't think you have to worry about the punting? I think I think Greg Clayton's going to be back there. You're not going to see the Aaron Anderson experiment is over, regardless of injury or not. Yeah. I think it's Greg Clayton fair catch it. They're back to that. Yep, get the but ball. I'm with Stewart. If if Caleb Jackson, it feels like Logan Diggs is your running back one, and he's going to get the after what you've seen the past three weeks. The bulk of the carries. Yeah, he's your. Yeah, uh, no doubt. So I, I don't, I don't know if you're to have that. a lot of chances. I still for think Caleb. that if there's going to be a second, if there's going to be a complimentary back to Logan Diggs, Logan D Diggs is the feature back. I mean, lo I had no idea. Logan Diggs is a dog. I, me, I mean, like, like, I, 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 Logan I, Diggs is a player. I don't watch Notre Dame football. I guess I was just. I mean, look Logan for Diggs as much train? as we've banged on recruiting. That's a hell of a get for Brian Kelly that's at the late. I mean, yeah, that, that's a late. big get. Well, it was they added him. They added him to the roster. We're all kind of scratching your head, going, "What the hell?" Right? Uh, you had seven other running backs but, on the uh, roster. But he was like, I think he came late because he was graduating from Notre Dame. Right. That's exactly right. He wanted, he to, wanted to come back to LSU, but he said how important the the, the degree was Graduate at Notre Dame to him. Man. Look, man. Hey, whatever it is, he LSU's got a primary. They've got a feature back. I mean, what did he touch it? 
24 times for 134 and a tud. Uh, love it. I mean, I, look I at, love it. And look at Notre Dame. Look at the spot they're in. Mm. Mm. Notre mm. Dame's consistently they're too looking about what, what's yeah, going they're on too at LSU. Pocket watching LSU. Got their teeth kicked in, worried about LSU. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at LSU the first half. So defensively, opportunistic, right? Like, be opportunistic. I mean, do something well, whatever it may be. Get off the field on third down. Get to the passer. Stop the run. Take away the football. Whatever it is, do something good on defense because on offense, welcome back to it, man. I mean, this is a revolutionary offense for LSU. Again, I believe this is the best offense in the country because when you have to have it, it is there. It's there, man. Jaden Daniels put his name down in LSU history on Saturday as somebody that you'll talk about for a long time. I mean, the, the, the year that he is having, I think he's putting together, he's right around the halfway point of putting together the second best year in the history of the school at the position. One that is spoken about as if it's untouchable. I know that's how I think about Joe Burrow in 2019. Oh, yeah. Untouchable. Class of its own. Right? But the way that Jaden Daniels plays it, the position, reminds me a lot of it. His efficiency. I mean, the numbers on Saturday, it didn't take him long to get to three touchdowns in the air. What did he commit? 21 pass attempts? 14 of 21. I think it was 24 pass attempts. 24? Mm Mm-hmm. But his efficiency, his completion there. ratio. It was 21. Sorry, yeah, 14 guys. to 21, I thought. 15 to 21. 15 to 21. Stewie stats over here. Boy. Yeah, and then and then he has 15 rushing attempts, right? And he goes for a, a buck 50. And I think that's the game plan you'll see them try it out against Auburn. You'll probably see not as many. If you can get some, just a, a pulse on defense to where you don't have to get into these Track meets every week, and you catch an opponent that is finally not Ole Miss and finally not, I mean, as weird as this to say, it's not Missouri, but they have, you saw what they have. LSU's not the only team that struggled against them defensively. LSU has just been caught in the ringer at the worst time for that defense to not have, like I said, a pulse. Now you finally catch a little bit of a break, and I could be wrong. It could still be that LSU LSU's defense is non-existent, and you see Auburn coming in and put up 40, but I think with being able to get off the field on on third down, which they were able to do, 4 of 11, which is the first time it's been under 50%, under 50% all year, I believe. And Gotta then be. you control the clock a little bit with an offensive game plan where you run the ball. What, how many times did Diggs touch it? What did I say? 24. 24, and then you have Mason Smith run at 15, and I think three other people got three carries. So you can see that they went in with a game plan to kind of control the clock a little bit. You still had explosive plays. And then when you needed it, Malik Neighbors is in. Malik Neighbors in the end zone. Brian Thomas is still there for shot plays. And without a consistent third wide receiver, you, like, you kind of turn to your run game. Auburn has only scored over 20 points in two games this year. And they were both against Sanford and U- UMass. Yeah. So. I think he's only thrown for over 100 yards, and so those are the only two games where they've passed for over 100 yards. So, was it Thorne? Yeah. Peyton he has Thorne. four touchdowns, four interceptions this year. That's not somebody that's going to come in and light you up. You would hope if it, mm. if they do. Watch yourself. You're back to, but it, it's. I mean, he was lighting Georgia up. But yeah, that was on the ground. They kind of found something there. Yeah, he only he, had 82 passing yards against Georgia. Yeah, he ran for I think over 100. Yeah, he's only had over 200 passing yards against Sanford. He had 282, and then week one he had 141. Yeah, hey, I mean, what are we talking about here? That's his best two statistical games. Offensively though, LSU is just as electric and as good as of a unit that that college football has and you're starting to hear the chirps around Jaden Daniels. And, and I think that you're going to look up at the end of the year and it may be a two-loss team that may be representing the West in in Atlanta. I mean, the the West is wild mm-hmm. right now. And, you know, LSU's outside looking in, but they're not dead yet. And with this offense, you, you would hate to waste a year of it with a defense so bad. That's why if they can catch some footing, the defense, and just mastering something, do something well, right? Get off the field on third down, take the ball away, stop the run, get to the pass or something. 
so you can create more opportunities for this offense. I think that, you know, th- this offense, obviously, they can play with they can play with everybody. I mean, the Oklahoma-Texas game, I think, said a lot about where, you know, college football is right now. I mean, as far as physical style, was Texas really ready to play that physical style? Because Oklahoma pulled up in the Red River rivalry and just beat them up. I mean, that was a physical game. You could see it early on. Sark and the horns were a little bug-eyed. And, I mean, from a physical standpoint, that that's still – it's still going to to win out. So if LSU can play a physical style on, on the defensive side and just keep up the pace of what they're doing offensively, I mean, really. I mean, they, they this college football season seems so wide open that if they can find a little bit of footing on defense that they're not dead yet. They're just – it's not as if it's completely run – for them if they can just figure something out on the defensive side of the ball. So, um, you know, I, I think... I think Swinson might be your answer. Uh, Swinson's been the answer. I mean... I mean, what what are... what? That's a, that's an example of, like, what are they... Every time 13 is in the game, havoc happens. And every time 2 is in the game, he looks Something lost. does... You know, something uh, against LSU happens. Uh, uh, edge is lost. Something. Contain is lost. But that yeah, so that's what I think they you saw more of him in the second half. You saw more zone in the second half. It might be as easy as that, where I don't know what that means for if you're in the Denver Harris camp, what that means for him, because he clearly likes to play man coverage. They went away from that in the second half. And you saw LSU play a form of football where they just kinda they're they're trying to keep everything in front. And what's happening is they're having missed tackles at seemingly every every level in the defense, so it doesn't matter where they catch the football. If it's eight yards in front of you or if it's 35 yards down the field, LSU's not around to make a tackle. Now if you can rally to the football and get some people on the ground, I think that's where what Weeks can help you. I think that's where, I mean, it's been tough for Andre Sam, but he wants to stick his nose in there. He's just missing. And same thing with Major Burns. He just comes in with his head down too so much. So low. You can't, you can't hit what you can't see. And, yeah, he got hurdled. And he's been, he's been in college football way too long for that to keep happening. Yeah. Like. And so I think that's what LSU's game plan is, at least on the defensive side. You continue with the Pete Jenkins experience. You'll see the defensive line get better and better. They probably will work some more like, like scheme things. And as a part, like it felt like they were working on hand placement and alignment. Alignment and assignment was week one. Pete. Yeah. Got him right a little bit. You said that yourself, Mason Smith, best game. Yeah. It was. He was around the football. And they were, they were using him the right way. They were giving him rest. He was fresh. He was active. He was... I mean, he's not bent over, you know, huffing and puffing yeah. the whole time. I mean, because it was good to see Jordan Jefferson out there. That makes him I – mean, it helps Mason Smith out being out there. So, um, Rotation was indeed better. It was. On the D-line, for sure. My guy Pete just getting after it. I don't understand the defensive backfield. I, the the rotation there has to change. I, like, just, I just don't get I, it. I don't understand how we sit – how the coaches sit there and watch – Zy Alexander not turn his head for the ball every time the ball is in the air. Watch the other cornerback just they, they just they just struggle like they just struggle in coverage. They struggle doing the little things right. Playing the position, so it's like why not switch it up and put somebody out there that knows what they're doing and wants to do it. I just don't think they have the guys right now. Yeah, it's frustrating. I mean, I think that when you watch LSU's defensive backfield play, there's a standard and an expectation that's just not being met. I mean, it's just. It's so far from what is expected from that group in position that sometimes it's, it's, it's very difficult to watch. I mean, it really is. I mean, it's just how, how much they're out of position, how they're just technique-wise are so far away from being effective, and how they just have a lack of an impact on the game are, you know, it's, 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 it's alarming, I mean, it really is. I mean, it's just it's it's crazy how LSU is so bad at defensive backfield in the defensive backfield. I Sam mean, linebacker is your best DB. Yeah, I mean, he looks so natural running. Harold Perkins on that interception where he's running. I mean, parallel to the sideline in the middle of the field and flips his hips and head and just makes a play on the ball. I mean, that was as good of a defensive back play as we've seen all year. 
really, and I'm not trying to make light of it. I mean, I'm being serious. I mean, it, it's it, it's it's crazy how bad the defensive backfield play has consistently been week in, week out at, 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 at LSU. I mean, it's 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 tough to see that. I mean, they got to fix that quick. Um, and, and I think they they obviously know that they catch a little break though with like the the offenses that they'll face coming up. I mean, I don't think Bama's a world beater on offense. They found a little something. They found something, know, but it's yeah, not right. like it's not like it's not Ole Miss. Yeah, they still it scored twenty six points. Yeah, like. But you saw Milro kind of play. That was his best game, I would say, as Alabama's quarterback. And that he, was definitely Jermaine Burton's best game. Yeah. I mean, he had three Sims. touchdowns? He had three t- I think going into the game, he had 185 yards receiving all season. I think he had a buck 90. Mm-hmm. True, he was everywhere. Even in the third quarter. I mean, he was toasting people. Blake See, Sims. that's the thing. I mean, nobody Jay can Lamar. guard LSU. Mm-hmm. Nobody can. I mean, like, you watch, these t- you watch teams play around the league. I mean, I, again, even Georgia on Saturday night, like – that was a mauling, but Georgia, that was a Kirby Smart special, man. I mean, you go back to last week, him in the middle of the week saying that every SEC team should be ranked and all of, you know, like the praise that he's given the league. And, I mean, I was listening to one of the inside shows. I mean, they were, like, talking about the practice field, how, like, Kirby's playing up the disrespect last week, playing up how good Kentucky is, getting these guys all riled up. It was a fluff piece. To where, I mean, they come in and just kick the <laughs> teeth in of a Wildcat program that was not ready to play. I mean, for as much as we praise Mark Stoops, and he, he, he deserves the praise. He's done a tremendous job of making Kentucky football relevant in a league that, you know, is hard to get a seat at the table. They're not ready for that stage. They're, they're not ready for that spotlight. I mean, his guys were hitting after the whistle. They were playing a little dirty. I mean, they, they weren't ready to play that game. I mean, Georgia came out there motivated, flying around, making plays, looked like the number one team. But even watching them in their past defense, they can't guard LSU. Really. I mean, they may be able to get to Daniels and create pressure and make it you know uncomfortable for him. But in the defensive backfield, they can't keep up with number 11 and number 8. And, I mean, you know, I mean, another week goes by, another week of dominance for those two. So, I mean, that's why I, I'm, I'm saying, like, if LSU can just, you don't have to even be good on defense, really. Like, just opportunistic in the chance of take the ball away, create turnover, get off the field on third down, do something. Specialize in one thing. Thanks for tuning in to our premium LSU content right here on YouTube. If you want more of it, subscribe below.